Your food processor make that very easy. You take a little can of anchovy fillet here, some almond, a clove of garlic, one mushroom cut in four pieces, some bread, leftover bread from the day before, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You turn that into your food processor. This is for the people who like a sturdy food. He's really strong. You make a beautiful puree out of it that I have here, and you cut provolone cheese or Swiss cheese, like this little, uh, little uh, toast of it. And this is quite strong, and you can even decorate the top with maybe a sliced almond that we have in there. And this is it. Spicy anchovy bread. You can make this dish even if you don't know how to cook. I am Jacques Pepin. This is Fast Food My Way. Happy cooking. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart, with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries. We do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments. Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. Sometime, just adding a little bit of something different to a recipe can change the dish into something special. For example, in our menu today, I add apple to my tartare of bluefish, a tartare of bluefish with apple. And I had actually some feta cheese inside the lamb to do a lamb burger with feta cheese and a yogurt cucumber sauce. Then I do a corn parfait. And finally, a fruit salpicon layered with cream cheese. And those are usually uh, you know, dry fruit that you can do this way. So I'm going to start with the corn parfait. And for this, of course, you want to remove the husk of the corn. There is nothing better than corn when you get them right out of the farm a treat of the summer. Always better. Within a few minutes, a few minutes that you cook them up, you cook them and this is heaven. Now with all kind of gadget to, you know, to take the kernel out of the, of the corn, there is one here which I have never tried, so I'm going to try it and it seems to be working pretty good. I mean the corn ended up being in there, but frankly, I think I'll stick with my knife. And what people do with the knife very often to take it out, for example, in that direction or in that direction, they will press with the knife this way, and you see, I put the pressure like this, and that can be a bit dangerous. And the reason is that, because you use only like one inch out of that knife without moving the knife. From that position, if I go here, and if I start here and finish there, then it becomes very easy, you know, to cut. The process of cutting is never crunching, you know? Same thing when you cut a piece of bread or anything else for that matter. So here we are. We have the corn of, uh, the here of four corn here. And all of that will go into the food processor. Clean up my mess here. Here it is. So four here of corn, it can be slightly different depending on the size of your corn, but and we can start this. You want a puree, you know, and in that puree we're going to put three eggs. Again, remember to break your egg this way, not this way, because then you put bacteria in your eggs and you break the yolk. I'm gonna put Couple of tablespoons of flour here, then salt and pepper. This is pretty fast. Type of gratin that uh, certainly my mother would make, you know. Maybe not with corn, even though I am from a part of France where we eat corn, which is kind of rare. The poulet de Bresse, where I am in Bresse, near Lyon, the chicken are very well known. They are fed with corn, and in that part of France we eat corn.
And I have about a cup, cup and a half here of half and half. This is about all I put in there. You want to put a little piece of butter in your gratin dish, you know. This is about five, five, six cup gratin dish. And this is it. That's ready to go into the oven. And it will take a good 30, 35 minutes in the oven. On top of it, a little bit of a, a good Parmigiano Reggiano. Although where I come from in France, my aunt, my mother would be more inclined to put Swiss cheese on top, you know. But I like Parmigiano. So this is it. In the oven, 375 degrees, about 30 minutes or so. Okay. Good. And now uh, we're ready to start with the main course. And the main course today are going to be lamb burger with feta cheese inside and a raita sauce, which is a yogurt cucumber sauce, uh, which is kind of classic in, uh, in Greece. So don't believe that uh, you can only make a hamburger with beef. I mean, this is ground lamb and the lamb usually, when I do it at home, I just get a piece of, uh, of uh, leg of lamb, you know, the back leg of lamb and you ground it. So the, the fat content is about 8% or something like that here, not too much. And uh, we're gonna put onion in there, a little bit of chopped onion. We want to do that. Or maybe, oh, well, that should be enough, about a quarter of a cup. Should be plenty. Maybe a couple of cloves of garlic, or at least one clove of garlic. This one is pretty large. Make sure to remove the stem of your garlic. So we, when you crush it a little bit, that will release your, uh, your shell. And then here, I want to crush that garlic into a puree to release the essential oil, then cut it into a fine, Texture, it's actually a bit big, so maybe I won't put all of it. That should be plenty here. Uh, salt and pepper, of course. Salt and freshly ground black pepper. Don't be shy with it. It's good with this. And I'm gonna put some mushroom in there as well. Maybe a little bit of a julienne or dice of mushroom like this, maybe coarsely chopped, you know, like maybe two mushrooms. Now th those are all ingredients which are used in Greece, you know. So I have my mushroom here, uh, oregano, and the Greek oregano is really good. I have to say that the Mexican oregano is great too. So one or the other, cumin, dash of cumin powder and uh, that's about that's about it for the mixture you want to prepare that and i have a pound of meat here and four hamburgers so those would be a relatively small hamburger i mean quarter of a pound each you know so here it is half here it is another half so what we want to do here, it's a bit of a nest inside the cumin to put a piece of feta cheese. You know, a piece of feta cheese about the size of a, more of a big olive or a little more, maybe you bring that on top. This is our surprise inside, you know. Here we are. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, olive oil on top of this here. I usually at home will do that outside. If I do that in the house with a thing like that, I'll probably be divorced. And I've been married 41 years, so. Okay, this is going to cook a couple of minutes. Uh, on this side, I'm gonna wash my hand. And uh, go on maybe with the first course. I'm going to reduce this because it seems to be going pretty fast which is good. 
I like the taste, you know, of the grilled meat on a very hot grill. So now what I'm going to do is a tartare of bluefish with apple. And I have a beautiful piece of bluefish here, which I'm going to cut into little strip. This is a beautiful uh, piece of fish. And when you do something raw like that, you do want a beautiful piece of fish. It is not the time to, to try to save money here. So I'm cutting that into little strip. And, uh, and serve it in there for four people. There I have about 12 ounces. So it'd be about three ounces per person, which would be plenty. Okay, in there I put a little bit of apple or the sweetening thing. So my apple here, put your thumb here to remove the inside of your apple here and there. You want to peel it. I'm going to cut that into a kind of julienne also or coarsely enough so you can see the pieces of apple. Here we are, half an apple is more than enough here. And a shallot. I have a beautiful shallot here. The shallot is a bit more delicate, certainly with fish, than the onion, although we do have very mild onion. Here we are. How about a quarter of a cup of... Uh, of this and then my garlic <coughs> which I can, I can slice and then chopped into very fine pieces. I could also crush it as I did the other one but here we are. Okay, salt, pepper on top of this. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, lemon juice, maybe even a little bit of lemon rind on this. I'm going to strain that through my clean finger. I'm putting some, of course, olive oil in there, Tabasco, a good dash of it. I love Tabasco and maybe a little bit of that rind here. Okay, this way, and that's it. <clears throat> My tartare is done. So there is all kind of other seasoning that you put in there, from scallion to uh, to um, you know different type of herb, tarragon, and so forth. But this is a bit different and pretty mild this way. Okay, you want to let it rest a little bit. So we're going to garnish that with cucumber. I can serve a slice of cucumber just like this. What you do, you cut your cucumber up to the moment where you get to the, to the seed, then you change side. That's it. And what we are going to do is to arrange the tartar right on top of it. I have a piece here. Mm, I can put maybe three pieces like this. And the tartar right in the center here, this way. The portion is good enough here. I'm going to bring that back on top and the one on the outside here. That's it. So I have a total package now, which is what I wanted and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on top. And this is it. You know, the tartar of bluefin tuna with apple. And I think that it's time for me now to turn those hamburgers. They are nice. 
nice and almost burn. But I like them this way, you know. So that's the whole point. Should never apologize, you know. They should still be one thing that you don't do with hamburger. You don't press them with a spatula. You know, all the juice come out of it. And of course, they cook faster, which is often what they do in, uh, you know, in a in a cafeteria and so forth. But this is not a good idea. So with it now, we're going to serve the cucumber sauce. So this is my grated cucumber. Again, finely some garlic in it. A bit of garlic, lemon juice. Right through my hand. The hamburger are looking good. Good. And mint. Fresh mint that we're going to chop as well in a type of uh, chiffonade. You roll it together, cut it into a very fine shredded look, which we call chiffonade because it looks like the chiffon, the material called chiffon, you know, a kind of crinkle like this. Okay. Salt and pepper. I didn't put salt in there, I think. Pepper. And of course, yogurt, and I put Greek yogurt in it. This is the best. So this is a very refreshing sauce, you know, with uh, lamb, and it's served also with fish, in fact. The cucumber are going to render some water, so it's going to make it slightly thinner, you know, in a little while. What I have to do as well, if bread for my uh, hamburger. And what I want to do, it's a piece of about well, three inches, piece of baguette that you want to cut in half, brush with a bit of oil. And you put it to brown. It doesn't have to to be brown, remember that that side is quite crisp, you know. Okay. okay. I'm going to remove actually those burgers. They are cooked enough. Choose the I would choose the burnt size to put underneath, preferably. Okay. Although it looks fine this way. The cheese is starting to ooze out. All right. Just to warm it up. Now, we're gonna put a little bit of salad in there. And uh, maybe just flavor it with a dash of olive oil, a dash of lemon juice. Great. You would want to do that, of course, at the last moment because that's going to get wilted pretty fast. Okay. Bread is uh, is brown enough here. Well, that's good. I think I'll pick up this one. Maybe put a dash of that on top. Most of it, of course. I'll serve it on the side. The right eye here. Good enough to eat. The lamb burger with feta cheese inside and the sauce, the right type, the sauce of cucumber and the uh, meat. So I'm going to get uh, my gratin, which I believe is ready now. So here we are.
It's a beautiful gratin. As you can see, And uh, no, you would want to serve that with this or two. I mean, the inside should be like a souffle, like, you know, very creamy and uh, it's absolutely delicious. And in the center, you can see still a bit wobbly. It could have a couple more minutes, but it's fine this way. Now it's time for dessert. And a very simple fruit dessert at that. I use cream cheese. I like to use whipped cream cheese. It makes your life easier. And uh, here I have a beautiful combination of dry fruit. I mean, from fig to dry cherries, pineapple, apricot, and so forth. So you can do the combination that you, you like. For this, you need about, about a cup of dry fruit, a bit of the dry uh, mission fig here, the black one, and uh, maybe a couple of apricot. I'm going to put a couple of dates here. Make sure that there is no pit in any of what you're doing here. Okay, dates are a bit tougher. I should have plenty here. She's pretty concentrated. Taste. I'll put maybe a little bit of uh, the skin of this in julienne. Here we are, a bit of the juice. You know, one thing that you can do is to put it in the microwave oven for like 10, 15 seconds, then you get more juice. So the juice and of course some honey, a beautiful honey here. Even that type of mixture is uh, Is great, so you can do souffle with that too. Okay, so I want to arrange that on a plate, and you can have one of those little molds, you know, a piece of pipe that you can cut. Sometimes, you know, you can use a can of uh, tuna or whatever. When I am in a barn, I, I have even done it with the, the top of a, of a cup like this, cutting that out and using this as a mold. Either one, you know, will work. So there, I want to put a little bit of cream cheese. This is a, a whipped cream cheese in the bottom of it, in the bottom of this, about a couple of tablespoons at the most. And frankly, at home, you know, I'll tell you the truth, I will probably, probably would not put that in any ring. I'll just put it on a plate. The combination is good. Then a bit of that in the middle. Here we are. This is quite concentrated, you know, the taste. Then a bit more cream cheese. You could even put a cookie. I have a cookie here. You can crumble a cookie right in there. You know, why not? Give you some crunch. Then again, a couple of tablespoons of uh, your cream cheese that you can press in place, here and there. That should be more than enough. You know? And we can have a little bit of, uh, of those fruit on top. You know, maybe even a bit of the juice on the outside, the honey, that is. Uh, that piece of lemon of lemon rind here on top, and uh, this is it. This is the cream cheese and fruit salpicon. It is the little surprise, you know, that make every day special for your family. So don't forget to cook with your family, and happy cooking. Visit our website at kqed.org/morefastfoodmyway to learn more about Jacques Pepin. You can watch shows online, view extra clips of Jacques in the Kitchen, print selected recipes from the series, and meet some of the people behind the scenes.
Call 1-800-937-5387 or log on to channel9store.com to order the book with over 100 recipes and color photographs for $32 plus shipping or to order the complete series of all 26 shows on DVD for $39.99 plus shipping. Production funding for this series has been brought to you by Cuisinart, with the next generation of food processors. From bread dough, to pizza, to stir fries, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Scharfenberger, makers of fine artisan dark chocolates, recipes available at scharfenberger.com. And by Spectrum Organics, a purveyor of fine culinary oils and condiments, Spectrum, the taste of goodness. And by OXO Good Grips, makers of kitchen tools that make everyday living easier. A KQED television production.